Well, from the classroom to City Hall, Jacob Small is getting a valuable education in the election process as an intern for the West Bloomfield Township Clerk's Office. Jacob joins us now. Good morning, Jacob. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. How about you? Yeah, you know, I have to ask you, what made you want to do an internship at the clerk's office? I've always been interested in governance and local government especially, and it really was just an offer I couldn't refuse. So what's this experience been like for you? Well, I've, I've learned a lot about what local government actually takes care of, like especially around personal business and elections, and elections especially in the clerk's office. So with that, can I ask what's been the biggest surprise? The biggest surprise, I think the biggest surprise is just how much they affect our daily lives. We talk so much about the federal government and state level governments, especially in relationship to how they affect us, but the local government can mean just as much. It's so true, and I think we saw that during COVID. So, yeah. and West Bloomfield typically has a pretty good uh, turnout when it comes to elections. So for you, are, are you 18 yet? Yes, I am. So this will yeah. be your first election? Yep. What have you, uh, what has this taught you about the power of your vote? Um, I, I've realized that de no matter wh where you are, like the partisan balance of where you live, your vote matters because your voice is being heard. You can't like actively say, oh, I'm not feeling listened to if you're not casting your vote and you're not going out and you're trying to affect how your daily life is being affected by your government. So we've all had to take, you know, the uh, government classes. What have you learned, though, that wasn't in a textbook? So I, instead of civics, I took AP Gov when I was in high school, but that mainly focused on federal government. I never really learned about what state level or even local level had to do with anything. So I've learned a lot about how that really is the major thing that affects you. You pay township level taxes, you, the school district is associated with the township. You have all of these things that are so close to you and that you just don't realize are affected at such a local level. Yeah, Jacob, um, have you started work yet? Yes, I have, uh, two weeks ago, actually. So you've actually turned this internship into a job. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. When you get that first paycheck though and you see those taxes, you're like, yeah, this is why I'm going to vote, right? Yes, exactly. I'm always like, if I didn't have to pay all these taxes, I'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you think you're making this much, but you're really not. <laughs> right? Really not. Hey, uh, so uh, what do your friends think about this internship? Uh, well, most people I talk to think it's such a cool opportunity. They're really excited about it because it seems like something that's so unattainable, but really if you just reach out and you ask questions and you go to these organizations there's a chance that they'll have an open spot for you and that they can take you on and educate you and what's great about this we know so many internships were put on hold during covid and so this is really a great opportunity for you uh, what are your future plans what do you want to do um so in the fall i'm going to james madison college at michigan state and from there, I want to either be go into campaign management or elected office myself. Oh, my goodness. You, you are dreaming big, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> so can I ask you what um, after doing this internship and now going to work for the clerk's office, what do you think about the politics that are going on? Right, like right here in our state, look at what's happening with the governor's race. Well, I think it's really interesting. I, I've always paid a lot of attention to that because I find uh, elections in the lead up to them very, very, very interesting. But I think especially with state level stuff in the governor's race, I think a lot of people might not completely understand what's happening. And they might be like, oh, this is an attack from the left or the right. These people are being left out for reasons that that might be partisan. But when you look at it, it really is about like the procedures and you have to go through those procedures correctly. And if you can't follow the like procedures that they line up for you, it, it so happens that you can be left out of things. Right, I know, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm like, how did they make this mistake? Uh, but um, are you kind of bugging all of your friends now to get registered to vote? 
trust me, everybody I know who is 17 and a half or older, I have been begging them to come in and see me at the clerk's office. And what are they, what are they saying? Your generation, I always like to get your viewpoint on um, politics because I feel like when we were growing up, it wasn't nearly as divisive as it is today. Um, the main divide I see is between people who are like in the know and actively paying attention to things, and people who have really no idea what things are, what's going on. So I think like it's important that we uh, reach out and we try to educate the youth a little more on at least the foundations of democracy, at least at a state level. So I think, um, you know, like, okay, I'm gonna date myself a little bit here, but American Idol was so popular and they had so many millions of people voting. It was like, but we can't get people to the polls, <laughs> you know? So it's like, this vote really matters. So with your generation, how much does social media play into the election for you and your friends? I think a lot of times social media gets a bad rap, especially in relation to politics. But I think, especially for those who are active on social media, it helps to educate them on what's going on and what elections are happening. And it can kind of show them what's going on around them. So um, are you planning to uh, get a law degree then if you're getting into, um, what is that, um, James Madison at uh, U of M? I mean, uh, Michigan State? I actually don't really have any interest in law personally. So if I'm gonna go for higher education, I think I'll go for either a master's in political science or something in that realm. That is so cool. Hey, what's it like working in government though? Do you feel like you you peeled back the veil of secrecy and now you're on the inside? I, I mean, to a certain degree, yeah, but I like nothing we're dealing with at least at the local level is something that at least from my perspective, was ever shrouded in secrecy. I can see how some people would feel that disconnect, though, for sure. So are you going to work the upcoming uh, primary? So I'm not gonna be working in precinct, I don't think. I will be working in the clerk's office, kind of maintaining the role I'm in right now, but I will be there. How many days a week do you work? Uh, right now it's four or five. Oh my gosh. Yep. You're busy, and as I just like, you know, get nosy about your whole life here, Jacob. <laughs> so uh, any of your other friends after you've had this experience, have anyone, any of the other friends that you know become interested more in politics because of your conversations? Uh, definitely, I think that uh, surely the amount I talk about politics and elections they have to at least listen to some of it. <laughs> I think that I have gotten through to some of them about at least the importance of it. I don't know about how much more. But what made you so interested in politics? Are your parents engaged? Um, my parents are civically engaged, but they're not active in talking about it really to a great degree. I think what really created my interest was the 2012 presidential election. I remember being really little and watching it on TV and watching the states go blue or red or wherever they went. I just remember it was so fascinating that everybody at once was choosing who was gonna run the country. It, it, it is a game to sit back and, and watch and the conversations as well behind the scenes, what's going on and how they pick a candidate to run for one position versus the other position. There's a lot of backdoor deals that can happen when we're talking about politics. So um, we wish you the best of luck. We're gonna have to come up and see you. And by the way, do you, do you get to handle um, doing the uh, pictures for passports? I do not handle that part. <laughs> hey, that's important. You need to get someone who's good who will let you take a good one. <laughs> I'll talk to my coworkers about it. Jacob, anything else you want uh, people to know? Um, call your local townships. Call everybody around you. Make sure that they know what's going on. Make sure you know what's going on. There's a primary election in August, a general election in November. These are important elections that affect your lives. Governor, state level, everything. These are the races that really affect you. So school. go out, get involved. Yep, you know, school board, we saw that during COVID. Uh, so when people go in to vote, 
this is going to be your first election. You know, um, I'm going to kind of uh, out myself here because I've been guilty of this back in the day of saying, oh, that's a female. Oh, that's an incumbent, <laughs> you know. But with today's um, you know, social media and the internet, you can really do your research yes. prior to, to voting for the people. Have you um, started to look into campaign finance reports yet? I have not looked at that, but I can tell you what I have been looking at. There's a great service called Ballotpedia, and they run a candidate form. And candidates can fill it out and share their interests, who they are, and what they stand for. And it's really easy laid out. And I highly suggest anybody who's interested in finding out what the candidates around them are about, what they're looking for, what they're looking to do, taking a look at Ballotpedia. Absolutely. That's a great resource. And for the candidates that don't take the time, to uh, participate, it makes you wonder yep. why. <laughs> yes, it does. And it can tell you a lot about where their priorities are, especially when it comes to you and letting them know, letting you know who they are. Who they are. Well, Jacob, I'm just gonna put this out to you. Um, when I can't sleep at night, it's one of the little things I love to do is go through the campaign <laughs> finance reports, especially on the uh, local level and uh, with some of the judges as well. So I'm just gonna put that out to you for your next rabbit hole. I'll take a look. <laughs> Jacob, it was fun talking to you. Yep, thank good, you so much. Good luck in your, in your new job. Thank you.